been our definitions of problems. Now, how do we solve problems? When it comes to problem solving, we've defined problems. How do we define the solving or the solutions? There's lots of different ways we can solve a problem. Imagine we were playing a game often referred to as mastermind. And in this game, it's a two player game. Player one selects a secret sequence of colors. The sequence is going to be four items long and they might repeat colors or they might not. The sequence could be blue, 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 yellow, 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 yellow. Or it could be a combination of four different colors, blue, red, green, yellow, in any way. And we have to try and guess. We guess first and our first guess is red, blue, red, blue. That's a pretty fine first guess. But how we make our second and third and, and fifth guess is going to really depend on what our solution tactic is. One of our solution tactics could be trial and error. You may have heard of trial and error and heard of it as a very good thing. It's the idea you try and if it doesn't go well, you try something else. Well, in a nutshell, that's possible. But in pure trial and error, this is when we try randomly and we're not really looking at what we tried in the past. We might not be presenting the exact same sequence as we presented, but we're not really thinking about it in a logical way. So when we're just trying trial and error, if we're doing something like the pendulum task and you might pick up the medium string and the heaviest weight and the highest height to drop the string, but then that doesn't work. So then you pick up something else random and then you pick up something else random. Or if you're playing this mastermind game, you pick out a random sequence of colors. And if it doesn't work, you pick out another random sequence of colors. Trial and error tends to not be the most efficient way to solve problems. It's great for starting things because you just pick something at random. But once you have enough trials under your belt, it's better for you to go with something more like an algorithm. So what is an algorithm? Well, it is a bit of a mathematical formula to try all possibilities. So an algorithm is going to be a way that you organize the possibilities in such a way you make sure you're thorough and you try them all. So if we're trying mastermind, imagine we could put numbers to these colors. If we try blue, 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 and it's wrong. We might try blue, 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 red, blue, 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 green, until you do all the possible blues. If we're doing the pendulum task, we might try all the possibilities with the longest string. And then we try all the possibilities with the medium string. And then we try all the possibilities with the shortest string. With an algorithm, you're guaranteed to eventually hit the right answer, but it's still not necessarily going to be the most efficient. The most efficient is what we know as a heuristic. A heuristic is an algorithm. It's a subtype of an algorithm, but it's an algorithm that allows for shortcuts. It allows for us to learn, compare previous results and see hints and see what's going better. A heuristic with the idea that if you're playing this game of mastermind, typically in a real game, you get feedback about how many colors were right and how many colors were in the correct position. And using that feedback, you could deduce or use deductive thinking to determine what looked like it was right from the past and what looks like it was wrong from the past to help you make better choices more effectively and more efficiently. So heuristic is the idea that you start to pay attention and you start to come up with some rules of thumb that allow you to form shortcuts. If you've ever played the Tower of Hanoi, there's one heuristic I love to use when I play it, and that it's when you're moving an odd number of discs, you always have to put the top disc where you plan to have the pile. And if you're moving an even number of discs, you always put the top disc where you don't plan to have the pile. And that, that's just one heuristic uh, I've developed over the years, which tends to work for me. So if you're a chess player, if you have any of those tactics or, or strategies, they could fit into your heuristic. Now there's some things that can make our problem solving a little bit less efficient. And one of those is known as the mental set. The mental set is the idea that you are hung up because you keep wanting to try what's worked for you in the past. This is the idea that you picked red, blue, red, blue in mastermind, and you just really felt good about that combination. So you're going to keep putting some reds in there because you feel like that could have been correct, even though your feedback doesn't say so. A mental set is the idea that we try the same thing multiple times without learning that it's not helping us. Mistakes are good. Mistakes help us to grow synapses in the brain and helps us to learn. A mental set is the idea is we just keep repeating those mistakes because we're not learning from them yet. One subtype of a mental set is a functional fixedness. And this is the idea that we keep repeating our past mistakes because we can't understand or imagine new possibilities. It's hard for us to be creative with it. 
Here's an example of functional fixedness. What if I asked you, what are the things you can do with a brick? Some people might say, build a wall, build a well, build a fireplace, build a house, build a dog house. And you might be thinking about lots of building structures. That makes sense. That's something we use bricks for. But if I asked you to list as many things as you can do with a brick, you might get locked in, you might get fixed, or you might be stuck in a mental set where you say, well, a brick is a building structure. That's, that's all I know. Versus other people, they might not be stuck in functional fixedness. They might come up with all sorts of creative ideas for what you could do with a brick, ethically or unethically. They might say you could do acts of aggression or throw it at people. You could draw a face on it and make it into a pet brick. You could use it as a paperweight. You could use it as a plaything for, for a dollhouse. Um, you could... Now I'm stuck in functional fixedness. So what are some of the ideas that you can think of for a brick? Now, sometimes we get stuck in mental set, but it's just temporary, and that's okay. Sometimes we need to experience the incubation effect. This is the idea that temporarily, we're not able to solve a problem because we're going down the wrong set of synapses. It's like blocking our tip of the tongue in our memory unit. This is the idea that we just keep thinking the same thing over and over again, and we can't think about new possibilities. And sometimes we just need to kind of stop trying to work on it, and then it'll come back to us, and it'll be fixed. So this idea of you're trying to write an essay and you just can't get the words out, just let it incubate. Just let it kind of uh, rest for a little bit and then it might be easier.